Good morning. Today is a new season. Uh, I guess, yes, it is. Uh, kind of two seasons. It's kind of sort of summer because what just happened this week, Lane? School's out, right? So <laughs> it's the start of that kind of summer season, the vacation season. But it's also today the start of Pentecost season. And today is Pentecost Sunday. And here today we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Let's rise. We'll turn to one another and share God's peace. Today's opening hymn is a little different. We've combined two hymns, and so uh, this is something new, and hopefully, yeah, it, it won't be as confusing as I'm making it sound. Hopefully it transitions and goes pretty smooth, but two hymns, that it seemed, man, they went well together, so we put them together. Let's sing our opening hymn.
rise. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting those uh, words of promise, let's now take a moment of silence to reflect on our sins. <laughs> Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son, Jesus, to die and rise for you. For his sake, God forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, by his authority... I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May we see it. I'll now read our intro for today. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Hallelujah. Today we have select verses from Psalm 104. And here the psalmist, he's reminding us that God continues to care for his creation one of the ways in which he does that is by sending us his Holy Spirit. And that's what we're celebrating today. Then we have our antiphon. That's an opening closing verse. It's not actually a verse from scripture. Uh, this is instead part of an ancient liturgical text. So these are words that God's people have said in the church uh, sometime in the last 2,000 years. And here we as God's people invite the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts. And that's what he does. Every time we gather for worship around word and sacraments, the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and gives us faith. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth.
Oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. It's been a while since we've had an Old Testament reading. Uh, during the season of Easter, our first reading has been coming from the book of Acts. Today we go back to the Old Testament. We turn to Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. And before I read, just something interesting. Uh, this particular text is one of the clearest promises we have in the Old Testament of resurrection life. So the promise of the resurrection does not just start on Easter Sunday. It goes back all the way throughout the Old Testament. This is one of the clearest examples of that promise. This is the Valley of Dry Bones. And what's an interesting question to ask is, God here promises to someday raise his people from their graves. This sounds very much like an Easter text. So why do we have this text today on Pentecost Sunday? And the answer is, you'll see this as I read it, that God ties the promise of resurrection life to the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we'll unpack how that works a bit more in our sermon. Uh, but first, let's hear the reading. Here, Ezekiel writes, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into me, and they or into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, we are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and rise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we turn to the book of Acts. So during the season of Easter, our first reading each week came from Acts. For the first few weeks of Pentecost, our second reading comes from the book of Acts. Today we have the Pentecost story according to Acts chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. 
And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise for the reading of the gospel. We sing the Alleluia verse. According to St. John, beginning with the 15th chapter, the 26th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Because concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. You may be seated. We'll now sing our sermon hymn. <laughs>
just pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts, all of our minds be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right, so today is Pentecost Sunday and we're celebrating the Holy Spirit. That's what Pentecost is all about. So today we want to ask, who is the Holy Spirit? What does he do? And to kick off that conversation, I actually want to do a little bit of a word study with you. So we're going to do a little bit of Hebrew and Greek this morning. And we'll start with the Hebrew. That means we'll start with our Old Testament reading from the book of Ezekiel. And in this reading, Ezekiel is led out by the Spirit of the Lord to this valley filled with dry bones. And the Hebrew word here that's being translated as spirit is ruach. I'll invite you to say that with me because it's one of my favorites. You get to clear your throat. <laughs> ruach. And so you have the ruach Yahweh, spirit of Yahweh, spirit of the Lord. And he leads Ezekiel out to this valley filled with dry bones. We're told the bones are very dry. That means they've been dead a long time. And Ezekiel's told to prophesy, that means proclaim, or to speak to the bones. And as Ezekiel speaks to these bones, they start coming back together. And then they're covered with muscles and tendons and skin and hair. And what started as a valley filled with dry bones, now it's a valley filled with fully restored but still lifeless bodies. So they're not alive yet because we're told there's no breath in them. So the next thing that Ezekiel's told to do is speak to the breath. Here's the Hebrew word for breath. Ruach. Yeah, you just said that word already, didn't you? And so now Ezekiel speaks to the Ruach. And the Ruach enters these bodies. They come back to life. And then God makes a promise. He says someday he will raise his people from their graves, raise his people from the dead. Then he'll place his spirit. That's the word in English we're going back to using. But what do you think the Hebrew is still? Ruach within his people. And hopefully you just got the idea here that in Hebrew, the word for spirit, the word for breath, it's the same word, ruach. It's the same idea. Well, let's look at the Greek next. So we go to our gospel reading where Jesus promises to send a helper once he's gone. And the helper will be the spirit of truth. And the Greek word here that's being translated as spirit is noima. And that word, yeah, I'll spell it for you in a minute too, don't worry. Um, the word, though, it appears twice Twice in our gospel reading, each time it appears, it's translated in English as spirit. If you were to spell that word using English letters, here's how you'd spell it. P-N-E-U-M-A, noima, the P silent. Think real quick, common illnesses. Think of, yeah, you got it. Common illness starts with P-N-E-U-M. Say it one more time. Pneumonia. What does pneumonia affect? Your breathing. That's because that word pneumonia comes from that Greek word noima, which means breath. But how did it get translated both times in our gospel reading? Spirit. So just like it was in Hebrew, same thing in Greek. Same word for both spirit and breath. Then finally, we look at the Pentecost story in Acts. And we have that word noima showing up throughout the entire reading. All but once, it gets translated as spirit. It's the noimatos agios, the Holy Spirit. But in verse 2, we get a different English word in the translation. We're told that the disciples, they're all hiding in that upper room. And suddenly there's a loud sound like a mighty rushing wind that fills the house. Guess what the Greek word is? It's being translated as wind. It's a form of the word noima. And so you could say a mighty rushing wind, mighty rushing breath, 
mighty rushing spirit. The point is, both in Greek and Hebrew, same word for both breath, for both spirit, it's the same thing. So then who is the Holy Spirit? He's the holy breath. He's the breath of God. He's the one who breathes life into God's people. He is quite literally the breath of life. So what does the breath of life do? If we go back to our gospel reading, this is what Jesus says. He says, when the spirit of truth comes, he's going to guide you through all the truth. He's not going to speak on his own behalf. He's not going to tell you what he has to say. Instead, he's going to speak what he hears. He's going to speak what I tell him to say. Jesus says, he's going to glorify me. He's going to declare to you all that belongs to me. All that belongs to the Father belongs to me. That's why I say to you, the Spirit will declare to you all that belongs to me. So what's the Holy Spirit going to do? He's going to tell us what Jesus has to say. How's he going to do that? Through the word of God. And remember what Jesus just said. All that belongs to the Father belongs to me. So where do we find Jesus' words? Not just in the Gospels, not just in the New Testament. The Old Testament too. That's all God's word. That's all Jesus' word. And the Holy Spirit's going to work through God's word to make God, to make Jesus known to us. And as Jesus is made known to us, we receive life in his name. So the Holy Spirit does his work through the Word of God. Think for a moment, if you want to be able to speak, if you want to be able to talk, what basic bodily function do you need to be able to perform? You've got to be able to breathe, right, if you want to be able to talk. So we can think of the Holy Spirit as being the breath that gives God's word its power, its voice. The Holy Spirit is the breath behind the voice of God. And this takes me back, actually. If you have a Bible with you, you can do this with me if you want. This was the 2004 LCMS National Youth Gathering. This was my first youth gathering as a DCE. And one of the speakers had us pick up our Bibles, hold them up next to our ears like this, and start flipping through the pages. And he said, what does that feel like? What does that sound like? Doesn't that feel, doesn't that sound like the wind? You know what that is? That's the Holy Spirit breathing. And he said, every time you read your Bible, every time you hear God's word read out loud, the Holy Spirit is breathing life into you. And as the Holy Spirit breathes, God himself is speaking to you, so listen. Every time we read our Bibles, every time we hear God's word read out loud, the Holy Spirit is there breathing, and as he breathes, Jesus is made known to us. We hear Jesus himself speaking to us. We receive life in his name. If we want to have life, We've got to have breath, right? Going back to our reading from Ezekiel, those bodies were lifeless because there is no breath in them. So if we want to have life, we must have breath. If we want to have life in Jesus' name, eternal life, then we need the breath of life. We need the Holy Spirit, and we receive the Holy Spirit whenever we hear God's word. Another question for you. Do we have any asthmatics in the house? It's just the Wells family today. That's all right, though. I'm fairly severe. Lizzie has it. Um, Lizzie, asthma is no fun. Not at all, right? And especially if it's left untreated. You go out into the heat, out into the humidity. You work too hard, run too fast, run for too long, and most likely you'll have problems breathing. Thanks be to God, we live in an era of modern medicine. And there are many medicines out there that can help treat your asthma, can even help prevent asthma attacks. Uh, Most asthmatics have a what? An inhaler, right? And that inhaler, you have an attack, you can take your inhaler, it can help you breathe again. Uh, Still take some time to recover, don't go back running right away. Uh, But the point is, if you have asthma, 
You want to take your inhaler with you wherever you go so that you can breathe. Guess what? I asked you if we had any asthmatics in the house. Everyone raise your hand. We're all asthmatics. We're all spiritual asthmatics. And as long as we find ourselves living in a sinful world, we cannot breathe on our own. We need our inhaler. We need God's Word. And every time we hear and read God's Word, the Holy Spirit comes and breathes new life into us as He treats our spiritual asthma. Unfortunately, too many asthmatics, myself included, both the literal kind and the spiritual kind, we have a bad habit of walking around without our inhalers. Mine's at home right now in the drawer. Yep. And if I were to have any problems... I'd just borrow Lizzie's probably if she has it, but otherwise wouldn't be able to breathe. Here's my prayer for all of us. This is my encouragement. Take your inhaler with you wherever you go. Have God's word in your heart. How does that happen? Read your Bible at home every day. Hear God's word read out loud and studied in worship every week. And as you hear and read God's word, may the Holy Spirit breathe into you and give you life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise. Confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed.